25 signs poverty is at work. Say poverty at work. When you say to people, what is poverty? Do you know what they say? They say having no money. And it's not true. Having no money is a result of poverty. So we want to now discuss this morning what causes those results. You know when you write your exams, huh? it's not when the results come out. Poverty is the result. This, the studying, the preparation, and the writing is what produces the results. So we have described the results as poverty. When actually we need to discuss what made you get there. Are you here? Refuse, reject completely anything that says you must be poor. Even a sermon, don't listen to it. The person who pushes poverty toward you better be ready to finance your destiny. Poverty is not a blessing to anyone and it does not glorify God. And yet the Bible says the poor you always have with you. The poor you always have with you. Deuteronomy, I did. Okay, in fact, Jesus, yeah, okay, let's pick it up from Jesus um, in Matthew 26. Don't say he said the book of Jesus. It's Jesus who are saying it. <laughs> the poor you always have with you, but me, no. Number one, I'm not among the poor and you not always have me with you. So Jesus distanced himself from poverty. Raise your right hand. Say, I reject poverty. I, reject. I refuse poverty. I refuse. Say, I'm not for poverty. Not. Poverty is not my portion. Not. In the name of Jesus. Why? Psalm 107 verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, say it, say it. Don't keep quiet. Poverty is primarily based on decisions. Your decision to refuse to say a declaration, you have chosen poverty. Say, I must make quality life choices, quality decisions that lead to prosperity and not poverty. Okay? Deuteronomy 30, verse 17. Verse 19, my apologies. And I call heaven and earth as witnesses uh, today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Hello? The uh, 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 version says poverty and prosperity. Huh? Are, are you seeing where I'm going with this? So you can choose greatness. You can choose weakness. Right? So there are many choices. Say many choices. Right? Then he says Therefore, choose life. In case you are too dumb, he gives you the recommendation. That, that is telling me that there are people who before that verse did not choose life. Even after the verse. <laughs> so God, is, God will not enforce pro prosperity on you. He will give you the ability to choose what cooks prosperity or poverty. When a woman prepares a meal for her husband and her family, huh? the meal is the end product. But there are choices she went into the supermarket to make. This way, it's, it, meat is not meat. There's quality. There's quality of meat. There's quality of spices. There's quality of cooking oil. Are you here? Even temperature, chai stove, you choose. You can choose slow cooking. You can choose cooking fast. These are all choices. The end product is the meal. Forget the meal. Let's talk about the choices that lead to the meal. So what you're experiencing in your life today, hello, is the meal that you have been cooking for years. And no one put a gun to your head to choose, pick these spices. No. 
Back to my example of a woman cooking. She's the one who went into the supermarket and chose. If you choose no name brands, it's your choice. It might still work, but the end product will tell you. Okay? What you're experiencing today is a sum total of your choices. Your choices. Right? So, the enemy now knows that the ingredients determine the end product. So he begins to push negative ingredients because Sharhuda is the negative outcome. So there are things in our lives that cook poverty. Here with the sermon. You are no greater than what you know. And you cannot think what you do not know. Proverbs 11, 9. A hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. But it is through knowledge that the just are delivered. So today's sermon is knowledge. Knowledge based. Knowledge based. That's why I said write notes. Knowledge. You can never remember everything I say. The shortest pe pencil is better than the longest memory. So it is knowledge that delivers. Proverbs 23 verse number 7. He says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Huh? So you are a product of what you think. Teaching removes negative things that you think. Negative mindsets. And begins to reprogram your mind. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I cannot reprogram your life, caption, before I reprogram your mind. As war unto you, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. There are doors you enter by keys, and there are doors you enter by force. Ancient gates don't require keys. They require force, deliverance. But there are new doors that are there. Why, why should we force it open? Let's give you the key. So knowledge is key. Watch this. If you reject knowledge, you are rejected from being king. According to your Bible. So don't reject knowledge. A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. Okay? But there's a portion of scripture, find it for me, that says, since you rejected knowledge, therefore I have rejected you from being king. That means there are levels that you will never get to until you have a certain level of knowledge. So if you are wise, you increase your knowledge. If you increase your knowledge, you increase your strength. All this power you see me demonstrating, a lot of it comes from scriptures. Not going to the mountain which you're not going to mosquito. You suffer a little bit and you say, God, now you can give me power. No. In 1 Samuel 15, 26. But Samuel said to Saul, I, I will not return to you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord. And the Lord has rejected you from being king. Can you see? You don't have to ramble knowledge. By just knowing certain things, some poverty must go. All oppressors, spiritual oppressors, physical oppressors, they, they, they oppress people based on what they don't know. So if there are certain things you do not know about the spirit of poverty, then poverty continues. So a lot of oppression is ignorance based. Hosea 4, 6. My people, my people are destroyed for lack of spiritual knowledge. They are my people. Can you imagine? He didn't say unbelievers. He said my people. And that scripture, Melissa says, a lot of there's more ignorance in church than outside. He saw his people as ignorant. Stretch your hands. Say, Father, strip me of ignorance and put knowledge in my life. I want knowledge. Listen, if you don't go back to the notes I teach you, that is the spirit of poverty. How many chapters of this syllabus on prosperity have you skipped? And yet every day you are writing the exam of life. And the results are showing. Psalm 
Say, I need knowledge. Talk to me. Say, I need knowledge. Isaiah 5.13 Therefore, my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Honorable men and honorable are famished. And then Zara, the honorable, but then Zara. <laughs> and their multitudes, dry up with thirst. How does the enemy enforce punishment upon a people? He uses the leader to make anti prosperity decisions. And that is all I'll say about that. In every land, there's a spirit of poverty that works with the leaders. Decision E. I know. Are you hearing me? So, I don't blame the men. I, I, I blame the brethren who should have the ability to deal with that territorial power and say, lose the mind of our king, lest he makes anti welfare poverty decisions. It is one man. He's not stronger than those forces. Let's leave the men. What about you? The decisions you are making, are they sponsored by prosperity or poverty? So, a lot of poverty is decision based. Decision based. Good resources plus bad decisions equals non-achievement. Thank God for deliverance power. But at scripture, um. Um. <laughs> Have you ever looked back at your decision and said, Shasha, boy, How about we stop those decisions before they happen? Do you know no one put a gun to your head for you to wear what you are wearing? From the undergarments, you made the decision to the trouser, to the shirt, to the socks or no socks, secret or not secret, you made the decision. To the shoe. Look at your neighbor. That is what they decided today. <laughs> and some were late to church. Do you know why? They made that decision today. There are decisions you need to make way ahead before you walk into your tomorrow. Look at your spouse. That was your decision. <laughs> At least in Zimbabwe, there is no forced marriage or arranged marriage. So, your marriage is a consequence of your decision. If you decided to marry a prayer point, that is your business. Marry the prayer project. War zone. So who's to blame? Who's to blame? How do we know that poverty is on you? Blame shifting. Number 25. Blame shifting. It's never your fault. You, you are Mr. Perfect. Miss Perfect. Everyone is wrong minus you. It's never your fault. You blame the ancestors. We're talking about my ancestors. You blame grandfather, father. You blame your school teacher. Everyone's to blame. They're not going to 
Yet you woke up late. When the spirit of poverty is on you, you don't take responsibility. You find someone on whom you want to apportion the responsibility or the reason why you are failing. So a blame shifter cannot be a leader. Once you blame shift, you cannot be a leader. Lucifer is in charge in this world today. Can I tell you why? Can I tell you why? He didn't blame shift in the book of Genesis. Okay. Adam, why are you in this situation? The woman you gave me, God looked at the woman. If, why? The serpent. He looked at the serpent. The serpent took responsibility. So today he's in charge on earth. Learn from the serpent. <laughs> if you don't take responsibility, you will never be in a position of power. A husband who does not provide looks at the wife and says, Already you are portioning blame for anger to your wife. Women were not made to provide. Look at their shoulders. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? They're the weaker vessel. You want the weaker person to provide? Providing Kudaraka was by hunting. Can you not see Rogers was made for hunting? <laughs> Lift up your right hand. Say from today. Reason 25. I reject you. I will never blame shift. I will take responsibility for my actions, for my weaknesses, for my condition. I take responsibility. If you fail exams, hello, don't ask for a remark. No, no, already you are shifting blame. Say I take responsibility. Say it again. Say I take responsibility. Many people in the body of Christ blame their pastors for their condition. Stop blaming him. Leave him. Just leave him. Go to a place where they can solve your problems. What's the point in saying in a church that you are just encouraged or entertained? Demons don't go away by entertainment. You need raw power. Genuine power. You need to follow a man who is invested in looking for power and knowledge. Those two things. Because some problems go away by knowledge, some go away by power. Not by entertainment. So, in the Bible, we see two major types of people that Jesus encountered in line with what I'm talking about. There are people who said, Master, what shall I do to be saved? Huh? And then there are those who said, Master, save me. So the save me team still exists today. Pray for me, men of God. Lay hands on me, men of God. That means that you are putting the responsibility of your success on someone else. What must I do? In every divorce, two people are to blame. One might take the major portion of the blame, but even you who says you are innocent, you have a part. So if you do not deal with that part, you go into the next marriage to be divorced again. What is your part? What must I do? T say responsibility. Raise your right hand. Say I take responsibility from today in my actions, wrong or right, I take responsibility. Okay, when good things come, we want to take the glory. But when bad things come, we, we don't want to take the blame. Iowa, uh, those are double standards. Do you see? When people say, well done, ah, you want to smile. But when they say this is wrong, you don't want the correction. You are the same person. Take responsibility. Take responsibility. A good leader takes what? Responsibility. So not taking responsibility, which is, which is blame shifting, 
is one major reason for poverty. And many blame the government. Hello? Which has got absolutely nothing to do with poverty in your life. I'll prove it to you. Under the same government, there are people who are built in triple story. Who remained a high land. Chapter 1, verse 1, that the government should give you land. And then you begin to tell yourself that everyone who's succeeding is a politician. In other words, you're giving yourself excuses why you should be poor. Can you see how it works? The devil works with your mindset. He doesn't look for new raw material. I know Shanda is really poor, Satan. The devil works with your anger. Number one sign that the spirit of poverty is operating. Arguing with the giving message. Why should people give poverty? Because poor people, especially in Africa, I'll talk about Africa. Africans are professional collectors. They collect from the west, they collect from the east, they collect from their neighbor. Professional receivers. You never prosper. You never prosper by NGO program. Unless if you are the one who's running the NGO. Wave NGO programs alleviated poverty. If, the, if, if NGO programs worked, they would have stopped doing them. If the goal was to you don't know NGO, if the goal was to eliminate poverty, by now you'd have stopped. But now you are writing for more funding. <laughs> to show you funding is not the solution. Because what happened to the last funding? It was swallowed by poverty. <laughs> Okay, let me show you. Let me show you how the poor hate giving. Proverbs 13, verse 8. The ransom of a man's life, in other words, the way to get out of that spiritual cage of poverty is a man's riches. But the poor does not hear this rebuke, he doesn't want to hear this message. Turi kapanya giving. As he doesn't hear it. Okay, some people, you took on some people online about the having a bash at me and talking against the giving message. Nizu. Okay, uh, of the reports I got, the most common thing I was told is they didn't want to hear the scriptures. Is it true? Is it true? And the Lord said to me, it is because of poverty. Poverty does not want to hear it. You. So poverty does not want to hear scripture. No, I feel, I feel when I'm out to run, Mary. I feel. Okay, we're not talking about your feelings here. Yeah? Feelings aside, what is the Bible saying? Because that man holding the microphone is preaching Bible. So let's judge what he's saying. Is it biblical? But the poor does not want to hear it. So poverty makes you reject any message on giving. Do you know why? It knows that that's how it will be eliminated. You don't invite a secretary who you can see is going to take your husband to be your secretary for the husband. You dismiss them. So poverty is dismissing the giving message because it knows that this message will replace me. Rusia mrumo a secretary yake is speak. Speak yake. Hey. Go and find a go go there. Should you do that type of my paper? You don't invite a maid with calves into your house. Oh, yes, so chaga. I'm a juzu. It is maid. It's only it's only maid in the Kareluka. Mufungaka. That's all right. That's all sweet. Iwe. Be wise. What makes you not want to give? Can I give you one word? Greed. Proverbs 15 verse 27. 
He who is greedy for gain, he doesn't want to give. He troubles his own house. <laughs> so by not giving, you are creating trouble for your house tomorrow. So poverty wants to ensure that it is there tomorrow. So it will fight you giving today. If you give today, poverty will go tomorrow. So the power of poverty fights the giving message. Proverbs 11, 23 to 24. The desire of the righteous is only for good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. Okay, give me 24. He says, there is one who scatters. That means you continue to give. Yet he increases. Then there's one who withholds. Kunyima. He doesn't want giving. He withholds more than his right. Yet it leads to poverty. Can you see? Anti-giving leads to poverty. It's right there. I'm not making it up. It's right there. Don't mind greedy and say poverty. Anti-giving is a major ingredient in the cake of poverty. Poverty swallows resources. Through habits, through actions, through beliefs. If poverty is operating in your life, no matter how much money you get, you must lose it. By spirits or actions, you lose it. Number two, argumentative spirit. There are people who are anointed to argue. Anything that is suggested to you, you want to argue first. Your first answer to a good suggestion is no. What do you mean no? No, 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 listen. No, you listen. <laughs> Job 6 verse 25. How forceful are right words. You see, even when I'm speaking right words like this, I have to be forceful. Because I'm trying to, get, to push them into your spirit. How forceful are your right words? But what does your arguing prove? So you can argue with right words. Ah. You can argue with good teaching. But he asks a question. What does it prove? Okay. If you have proved that Chipoera is taking people's money. What have you proved? Then what? How has that changed your life? So arguing proves nothing. So if you have an argumentative spirit, fast about it. You also do narrow. You even argue about things that have not happened. Mira one nasty man which are winner. Ah, Mira one young. And a share of that transfer fees will never be yours. I'm teaching you what will make you make the news. You just want to read the news. When you are a giver, you are a newsmaker. Lift up your right hand. Say, Father, this spirit of argumentativeness, I reject it from my life. May I never argue with solutions. May I never argue with wisdom that improves my life. So the spirit of argumentativeness is the spirit of poverty because it makes you argue with things that will change your life. You know, there are things which you argued with, which if you didn't argue with them, by now your life would have changed. Kudara. Say I refuse to argue unnecessarily. I'm not saying be gullible, but I'm, I'm saying sometimes you don't agree with what someone is saying and you can tell this person is convinced. Don't argue with that person. When, you, when fools argue, you don't know who's got the wisdom. In fact, even when you argue with the fool, people will not see which one is the fool. Are we, are we together? Somebody say there's always a more excellent way. Okay. Can I, can, can I humble you? Everything you, not, everything you know is not the ultimate knowledge. 
Ukada kuzi convince that you also know Zivan does recorrect. You have shut out new knowledge. Number three is linked to number two. Unteachable spirit is a major ingredient of poverty. If you are not teachable, you are not changeable. If you are not changeable, you are not blessable. Because there are things that will not come on you until you learn certain things. Okay? Write this down. Be open for new information and revelation. Be open. Open. Did you get that? Don't assume that everything you know is all there is. Acts 18, verse 24 to 26. He says, now a certain Jew named Apollos, born of Alexandra, an eloquent man, English church, and mighty in scriptures, came to Ephesus. Can you imagine him coming there? In his mind, yes. huh? next verse. This man had been instructed in the ways of the Lord. He was fervent in spirit. I speak in tongues. He spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord. We are not denying good. I gona. Kabanga ruto gona. You are doing well. It's hard to teach someone who's doing well. <laughs> Hello? He spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord. Though, but though, but though, but in us, though he knew only the baptism of John. <laughs> Can I tell you something? When you introduce new truths to people, they want to tell you what they know. Okay, so we, we acknowledge, we acknowledge. Can we put it aside? Because it's not the only thing they used to know. You know about baptism. Van Gaba Batizwe. Can you imagine if I baptized you every week? Thank God for evangelism. But the danger of being an evangelist is you want people to be born again every week. Born again in door. So my job as an apostle is to take you from the door and introduce you to other rooms in the house. So if you only know knowledge on the door, as the ultimate knowledge. Do you know what they say? They say, prosperity, is gospel. Have you heard that before? Have you heard that before? We are not denying. Kuti gospel is the word of God. But it's not the only word. We enter into the kingdom by salvation. But we cannot get saved every week. And they will be accurate in what they are saying. But it's not everything. Though he knew only the baptism of John. Only. That means he knew nothing about the Holy Spirit. That means he knew nothing about favor. That means he knew nothing about owning land. That means he knew nothing about children's church. As much as you know, you are still limited. So open yourself up to new things. So when those people argue with you, say with them, no, what you're saying is right, but there's other things. If you make the mistake of thinking a Honda Fit is the only car, you'll be shocked. I'm not Range Rover. You'll be confused. You know how to drive, but there's other cars. Do you know what you hear people say? Can I see the B60 nice motor? You've not gone into Isuzu. Marriage could be a room. Eh? Can I put a little bit of a Watch this. He only knew the baptism of what? John. So he began to speak what? Boldly in the synagogue. And you speak boldly about things that you know only. But please don't argue about what you don't know. 
Do you know what people do? If you teach them new things, they are saying what you know, the old things, they don't matter. No, that's not what we are saying. We are saying there's more. So you are speaking boldly. I love this. Then Aquila and Priscilla heard him. <laughs> they took him aside. That's <laughs> Shasha. Who ya? Hey, Papa Tiswa. <laughs> Come. They took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. So even there was another level of accuracy and then there were other things to teach him. He also opens blind eyes. You just giving. But that's not the only thing he does. Do you know by injection? But don't build the doctrine around your clinic. Oh. He took him aside. Two, two minute clip. Take them aside. And explain to him uh, 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 the ways of God more accurately. Galatians 2 2. <laughs> Munu akaita chivi anofa na kufa. You are correct, but you are incomplete. There's the doctrine of mercy. <laughs> so people don't believe in mercy. Anyone who makes a mistake, kill them. Can you see the danger of having a one belief system? There are churches that only taught on holiness. They didn't survive. Because they didn't bring in mercy. Are we saying people should sin? No. We are saying since you are going to sin. And the messes are new every morning. Thank God. Let's pick them up and use them. Give me, read for me. One, two, three, four, five. The first five words. First six words. And let's go. One, two. Ready, read. And I went up by how did I go up? Right. So I stayed down by no revelation. Revelation means so you go up by new revelation. Listen to what the Lord said to me. Psalm 113 verse 7. Hansi, he lifted up the poor. It's not just by deliverance. It could also be by Revelations. You combine that with Galatians 2.2. 2. I went up by so if you don't catch the revelation on giving, you will know, never go up financially in your life. You need that revelation. Raise your right hand. Say, Father, make me teachable. Let me be open to new information. Say new information. Okay? That's number three. This one. Alright? Which is an unteachable spirit. It's a major ingredient for poverty. Number four. Spiritual blindness. Spiritual what? Say spiritual blindness. The man at the gate called beautiful was lame. So he was begging. Am I right? If your hands are weak, you will beg. Okay? If your feet are weak, you also beg because you, immobility. Am I right? But there's something that causes more begging because there are some lame people, lame in the legs, but they do things with their hands. This one, maybe someone's, something's wrong with their, with their hands, but they can do other things. This one. But there's something that is a major limiting factor. And whenever Jesus met this, he dealt with it decisively. Can I teach you what it is? Blindness. Blindness. Say blindness. Talk to me. Say blindness. Jesus was very aggressive when he met the spirit of blindness. In other words, he spoke and some people became blind. Some he just declared and said, you spirit of blindness, go. He went to the, to, to the level of spitting in people's eyes. That's how desperate he was to remove blindness. And in some portions, he spat on the ground, mixed the mud and removed the blindness. Because blindness is a major affliction in the body of Christ. 
Why did he do with blindness? Because the spirit of blindness promotes poverty. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, he sat by the roadside begging. So his begging was a product of blindness. You see that? So if you are blind, automatically you will be poor. Unless someone comes to help you. Now that is physical blindness. The same applies with what? Spiritual blindness. May you not be spiritually blind. May your spirit be open. Lift up your right hand. Say, Lord, open my spirit. May my spirit never be blind. May I see danger even spiritually. May I see even new things spiritually. Open up my spirit. Remove spiritual and natural blindness. When you are blind, you know you can have what is called blindness to opportunities. Write it down. Blindness to opportunities. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Let's say for, for, for example, uh, school uniforms are difficult to find in Zimbabwe. A certain color. Maybe let's talk about that gray color. You know the gray, the gray khakis. There can be a shortage of those. This Right? And you begin to hear that there's a shortage of gray khakis. Shortage of gray khakis. You're not even a parent, but you're just hearing this information. Hello? You have a decision to make. Either to scratch your head and say, you are an NB, or to say, I remember I'm Darong NB. These things never used to happen. But they have no idea what they're doing. Next day you hear again someone say, Those gray uniforms, I can't find them. The problem is you are not hearing the opportunity. Arushaika, Zimbabwe, but South Africa, Jawi. God is showing you an opportunity. You can even give it to your child and say, hey, Tanaka, uh, let's bring in my gray uniform. Hello? And we can post these things online and sell them. So, Poverty, write this down, blinds you to opportunities. Say blindness. Say it again, say blindness. You are in construction, but you can sell cement. And everyone in your construction industry can become your client. So apart from waiting for contracts for three years, you are selling cement every day. But no, that poverty, I say, yes, that's a good and the fabric chain one ngiji ng ambulance are you an ambulance i have a question are you an ambulance so why fabric chain jingo jeta you know that must be poverty to my prophet to namo takawanda sangoro no paneta ai wa sangoro no pane wisdom wa neta ka bosiri kutenderera have you heard that advocate Sango Rinova and automatically I say skip. <laughs> ha! Why should I get tired before the forest gives me? I can make peace with the with the forest. I can make covenant with the forest. I can go, I can use a drone and find where the, what I'm hunting is. But you know, if you believe that Sanguro Paneta, if you're not tired, you believe you don't qualify. <laughs> say blindness. blindness. Talk to me, say blindness. blindness. So, when you're blind, you are poor. Why? P, put up the P double O R. Put P dash O dash O dash R. I want to show you something. Say poverty. Okay. So P passing O over O opportunities are repeatedly passing over opportunities repeatedly the result poor. I want to go to England yet the white people are coming here. There's more opportunities here than in England. 
ndege ziruko zara ni machina they are coming here but you you want to go to canada <laughs> to continue slave trade <laughs> my uniform is gray eye what's here and how many opportunities are you passing over my shops i'm not a grocery i'm very angry about the government government i'm not a grocery shop what panas for market yeah you remember maybe maybe this guy is who made this for market i know Mkwati bibi Mkwati is it today so So why are you blaming government about grocery Why can't you turn into spa Okay since you have seen kutizo hakuna whatever it is mafuta nzungu whatever it is that you are seeing is lacking Ha huh? so you have you have seen it How about you now create opportunities around the gaps you are seeing can that not solve your poverty problem no one has ever blamed the government until they prosper dai o anyanya blame o mari unyarari look at you never say neighbor see ana ne urumende urum private sector There are pastors who blame the government for their churches as if the government preaches. Nah, you know, my minister is from us or Mendes. Leave the whole man. <laughs> Leave them alone. Rather settle down. Terra matiche kwangane raf raf. Mu raf yuma mune ma solution. There's one thing about me. I will make you think about you. Hana na shoko. Tripa number. Take number 5 ka. Lift up your right hand on number 4. Say never again. Will I pass over opportunities repeatedly like I've been doing for years? and yes can i give you some wisdom everyone in your phone book can be your customer they are not your customer because they are not selling something when god puts people around you he has put potential customers around you you start in judea then samaria then the atmos parts If you fail in Judea and Samaria, don't go anywhere. <laughs> That is powerful. If you can't sell to your relatives, never mind strangers. Let your relatives, your relatives let them correct you. Tayo zvakatsema zvakasonesh. The people in Samaria, they will just walk away from you. Tanga mbai mumu. Number 5 Major spiritual mistakes is a sign poverty is in operation Say spiritual mistakes For example kubata bata dabbling Psalm 125 verse 3 the, the 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 righteous must not dip their hands in iniquity Ruta gepa crow imposter Child of God Where did Jesus give people stones Show me. Kuroa makuwa. Eating contaminated meat. Spiritually. Grave rituals. These are major spiritual mistakes. Say with me major spiritual mistakes. And we have made these mistakes and they must be corrected. Are we on the same page? On 
on spiritual mistakes includes it includes major sexual mistakes Genesis 49 Reuben you are my firstborn my mind beginning of strength excellency of dignity excellency of power that was his prophetic destiny next verse unstable as water write this down I must be spiritually stable people who are not stable spiritually they find themselves on different altars unstable as water you shall not excel why are many poor? Because of instability spiritually. Be consistent even if it looks like it's not working. It's working. Are you hearing me? Say consistency. Consistency pays any day, any time. So Reuben was unstable. He was inconsistent. Because you went up to your father's bed. You see that? Somebody say sexual mistakes. Say it again. Say sexual mistakes. You can go to your father's bed. And you defiled it. Next verse. Okay. You are not me. <laughs> but the point is, Reuben, you will not excel and he was given the reasons. Instability will equal to sexual mistakes. Somebody say stability. Say I must be stable. Lift up your right hand. Say Father, I have made many spiritual mistakes. Remove from me the power of spiritual instability. Let me be consistent in the things of God. For if I am consistent, I will see results in my life. I must be consistent in my prayer life. I must be consistent in my fasting life. I must be consistent in my giving life. I must be consistent in studying the word. I must be consistent in listening to the word. Help me Holy Spirit to be spiritually consistent. You know who was beaten on issue of consistency? Um, Jacob Naiso. Okay. Jacob was more consistent. Esau depended on a big catch. So when a meal was wanted immediately, he didn't have it because he was unstable and he was not consistent. And Jacob leveraged on his relationship with his mother. His mother, speaking of the Holy Spirit, the helper. So she helped him to get what was supposed to be his brother's. Hallelujah. Lift up your right hand. Say any evil altar that I went to and I made a mistake and it has affected my life. Jehovah, remove the spiritual affliction caused by this mistake. In the name of Jesus, I cry for mercy. I have made many spiritual mistakes. There are altars where I went to, even from when I was young until now, including false prophets. It was a mistake. Jehovah, remove this mistake from my life. Remove the effects. Remove the consequences of these spiritual mistakes, for they are causing poverty, hardship, lack and want, in the name of Jesus. Number six, a weak character a weak character. If you are weak, you are very emotional. I'll tell you, Gemma. Backbone will win over wishbone anytime, any day. Have some backbone. Be a person of character. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Are you here? Write this statement down. Poverty works with your character and takes advantage of your weakness. Poverty works with what? Your character and takes advantage of your weakness. So fight your weakness. It's a way of fighting poverty. Caption. If you fight your weakness, it's an effective way to fight poverty. 
Because poverty just gets into your weakness and begins to operate there. You want me to talk about your weakness? You know it. If you are Moses, poverty works with anger. No promised land. If you are Reuben, father's bed. <laughs> you love to bed sisters. Reuben <laughs> Bovira. So when someone comes to entice you for bedding, you say, Ruben, you not excel. And I refuse to not excel with you. <laughs> Number seven. Drawn to wrong friends and associates. You are one association away from poverty. So, if you can prosper by in, being introduced to men, you can be poor by being introduced to men. And can I tell you the problem with you? That you need to correct? Ah, true correct. You have too many friends. If you have too many friends, it's easy to, to just put in a devil amongst them. Your, your major prayer point for thanking God is thank God for what's up. <laughs> Lord, thank you for what's up. I, can, I appreciate Lord. At least I can talk to people. And most of your money is going to data. And not to research, to talk to friends. You talked yesterday. It's enough. Let's talk next month. Is they're still your friend. Who told you you've got to maintain that friendship every day? The Bible says he who comes into his neighbor's house, including his neighbor's inbox, every day is annoying. Find the scripture. Every day, every day, every day you're talking to the same person. Who's okay? Did he say? right. Mamuka, of course, Namuka, and Ruta ran away. Namuka say, Ah, Napsa Gumo Magubez, Nana, don't move on that. Nana Stretcher, I owned. Eh, Sanas, Dave, Dave, Dave. Ah, Pananas, Chok, Chok, Nina, which worker. Okay, okay. About data Rufamba, data any time. Ah, less, less. Nina Gachila, Uncle. Eh, Sakas Rufamba say, same question. I am a one. Yeah. Ah, Kwapisa. Ah, Kwana. Oga, shut that conversation. And I know research out to Uku to Tengo Maruk. Tango took up my prize in Neo. My pranga, fans, Vita Danga. It's more productive than Dave Dave. Proverbs 25 verse 17. Don't visit your neighbor's inbox often. <laughs> or you wear out your welcome. <laughs> Do you know that scripture is in the Bible? If you phone someone every day, you don't know what they are saying. If someone doesn't answer your phone, it's a signal. Especially if they don't then return the call. Don't phone again. Wanyanya, wanyanya, wanyanya. Choka ni setu tarej. Daily. Tete arimbere ngwa. Tete. Who is it? Hey, ma vura mumbi. Koka na wasna zufura. What are you going to do? Are you going to drive to Berengwa? I'm anointed to pastor you. Listen, write this down. You can never go further than who your friends are. The blind leading the blind. Hey, hey, that was a part of your life. I don't remember to go to chapter 4. Move past that. 
How many friends from school do you really need today? But you know the enemy can make you focus on that. Very dear to me. Maranatha, Maranatha. <laughs> Instead of making new space, you, you, even your phone is telling you to Daku Zara. Yala Zara no nas nabasa. Yeah, that time I joined. I have one friend, Pastor Justice Day. We talk once every two or three weeks. He's still my friend. People with nothing to do, they want to disturb everyone else. 